If you haven't heard yet, I am selling Ricky. And I go through all the explanation. You can watch that by clicking up here. Basically, Wabi is sponsoring the channel and I'm very excited about that. And now the Wabi special, that bright yellow, good, lugged Wabi special will now be my daily bike and that's super exciting. The only thing is I want to switch over some parts from Ricky over to the Wabi special to make it my own a little bit and in all honesty that Wabi is a perfectly fine bike right out of the box but I just want to swap over some components to personalize it a little bit. Uh, the problem is when I built up Ricky, I put on Sugino 75s on him. Sugino 75s are my favorite crank set. They ride really nicely, and they are the best looking crank set in my eyes for a steel bike. And I got that black pair of Sugino 75s from a friend who is now my roommate, and I got them for a hundred bucks. And he sold them to me for a hundred bucks because the drive side was stripped a little bit, just a little bit. Fast forward about three and a half years later, and me, being really bad with mechanics, that drive side crank arm is now really stripped and it's kind of stuck on there. A crank puller's not gonna get it out. Because that friend who sold me these 75s is a much better bike mechanic than I am, he recommended to get that drive side crank arm off that I soak the spindle of the bottom bracket with some penetrating oil so that it can just slide off with a bit of wiggling. Yes. I know that this is probably a bad idea. Yes, I'm fully aware that I might damage the crank arm or the spindle of the bottom bracket. And yes, I am aware that you should not install partially stripped components onto your bike or it might lead to a bigger problem down the line. And yes, I'm still doing this anyway because I'm not about to pay $170 for a drive side Zugino 75 arm. Hopefully this works. Now, I know you're probably thinking, but Zach, even if you do get this crank arm off and you put it on the Wobby, won't you just have to deal with this same problem down the line? So shouldn't you get the correct part and not use damaged parts? And the answer is yes, but I'm doing this anyway. And I know it's a bad idea, but I want this crank arm. And yes, I know it's stupid, but that's a problem for future Zach, which is exactly what I told myself when I put this thing on here. Unfortunately, I'm future Zach, but I'm also present Zach and not future Zach. Excuse me. Oh, wait. So I let that crank arm soak with the penetrating oil. That oil is definitely in between the crank arm and the bottom bracket spindle, so theoretically it should slide off a little bit easier. But I've been trying to wiggle that thing off for about 30 minutes now. I've been stomping on it and track standing on it every which way, and it looks like that thing has not budged. Might have to come up with a plan B. I'm getting that crank arm. This is plan B. I looked up a video from a guy who is a much better bike mechanic than me. It goes by the name RJ, the bike guy. You've probably seen some of his videos. And he had just the video that I was looking for, which is how to remove a crank arm where the inside threading is totally stripped. And he recommended to get one of these things. This is a three jaw puller and basically it's pretty much like a crank puller, but except of grabbing on the inside threads of the crank arm, this will wrap around the spider of the crank arm and then push on the bottom bracket while pulling up on the crank arm. So, pretty straightforward. Hopefully we don't have to go to plan C. The arms on this little puller can't get under because they go outward instead of inward like a claw and I gotta go back to the store and swap it out. And there's a certain part of me that knows that this is kind of a bad idea. Sure, I can get it off, but it's like, that's a headache down the road and I need this specific tool just to get my dry side crank arm off. And it's like, yeah, don't use stripped parts. That's just cutting corners and that's stupid. But then there's another part of me that's like, I've been using this same crank set for only God knows how many thousands of miles. I've got a nice, some nice busage on it where the black has started to fade to gunmetal, and this is my crank set, and I want it. 
by golly, I'm taking it with me to the Wabi. Well, I think it would have worked if I had been more diligent in keeping it on. So if this doesn't work, whoever wins the auction for Ricky, I'll well, be going to get a pair of 75s. That didn't work. Um, take three. The first attempt was with the bottom bracket bolt. And this one didn't work because the threads couldn't handle that kind of force, so it slipped, and I stripped my bottom bracket bolt a little bit. What RJ the Bike Guy recommended was to use an 8mm socket to have the three-jaw clamp press this onto the bottom bracket. Unfortunately, I have like <laughs> all these sockets in this house. I've yet to find an 8mm one. The second attempt was with this 7mm. It had a little bit of play in between the crank and the bottom bracket, so it slipped. But inside this nightmare of a toolbox, there's gotta be an 8mm socket somewhere. <laughs> went through that mess of a toolbox, there's no 8mm socket. The best thing I've got is this 7mm socket and a paper towel to hopefully try to shim it a little bit. I know some of you guys out there are just like, why don't you just do this thing that's a super easy solution and we'll fix your problem. Well, because I don't see it and I do not like working on bikes. I would much rather ride bikes than work on bikes. So Min here, who is much better at bike mechanics than me, is helping, and this is supposedly the moment of truth. That's a lot of torque though. Oh yeah, it's been on there. <laughs> I'm scared. Holy oh smokes, my god. <laughs> Please. I'm turning the table more than I'm turning it. Oh my goodness. It's still going. I feel like this, the spiders is going to explode. I hope not. <laughs> Dude, how tighter can this thing get? Yeah, just seeing how tight this is, is just very indicative that it's a bad idea to put it on the lobby. <laughs> Dude, holy smokes. I almost feel like it should not take this much force. Dude. This poor 75. How is it still going? Oh, dude, this guy is so tight on there. I'm literally busting the sweat do, now. Do you need to need to hold down anything? No, it's coming up. It's coming up. Jesus, holy crap, that is gnarly, man. <laughs> Let's check this thing out because this guy looks bent. Uh, yep, this guy's bent. Uh oh. Check that out. No, nope, that is it's not straight anymore. That is bent. Holy smokes. Jeez. <laughs> Quality stuff. <laughs> so now I'm selling Ricky with the 75s. Just know that if you're the one buying Ricky, you're probably going to have to destroy that drive side crank to get it off. On the bright side, you get 75s. Something I didn't try was a heat gun to expand the crank arm and then to apply all that force, but my goodness, that thing did not even budge. If anyone out there has a set of black 75s and a matching bottom bracket, please do email me at im at zachgallardo.com because apparently I'm in the market for black 75s now. Alright, well, this took way longer than anticipated, but Ricky is finally ready to go up for sale. It's been a good bike to me. Of course, at the time of this video, Ricky will already be up for sale, and if you're interested in giving him a new home, you can check him out in the description. If you're interested in buying Ricky, do keep in mind that, yeah, I kinda screwed up 
the drive side crank arm and of course it is stripped and you're probably going to have to destroy it to get it off but it's a 75 it'll run smoothly for a long time sealed bottom bracket too also i will be including bar tape i'm not putting it on though so you can decide how many brakes you want to run so you'll get tapeless bars other than that i hope you enjoy this beast of a bike and so Ricky begins his search to find a new home to bring his new owner many more memories. This is almost, almost sad. This would be much sadder if I didn't already have an awesome new bike lined up for me. I almost feel bad because I really do love and adore my nature boy and it's just such a great bike, but everything about this Wobby, it just feels right. And I can't wait to get some black 75s and a silver chain ring on it. Also. Shout out to Wabi for sponsoring the channel and for making awesome bikes. And also feel free to check out Wabi and their awesome bikes at the link at the top of the description. So far, all I've done with the Wabi was put on my Brook saddle and put on my pedals, but I still need a little bit more to make it feel like my own. So please do email me if you've got a black set of 75s for sale, cause I am looking. Also so far, I'm pretty digging the risers, but whether you love them or hate them, I'm thinking about putting these on the Wabi. Say what you will about my grandpa bars, but these things are a ton of fun. And if you haven't ridden your bike yet today, stop watching me right now because life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.